So uh, thank you everyone for, for joining me today. Um, as Isedi has said, my name is Harry and I'm part of the team from Microsoft Stores. I'm based in Portland, Oregon actually. And uh, today I'm gonna talk to you about accessibility in Microsoft Teams. And we'll be focusing a lot on accessibility in meetings because we know that meetings are a huge component of what you are all doing in Microsoft Teams. But there are also some really great accessibility features to keep in mind for the application as a whole that in turn will also affect meetings. Uh, as, as we've said at the beginning of this session, some of these features may have limitations or caveats for your specific tenant in your organization. So uh, if you have any questions about those features or maybe you're not seeing them on your end, uh, definitely contact your CSM or your account manager and they'll be able to help you answer those questions. And if you don't know who that is, then let us know in the Q&A and we can make sure to get you connected. So I'm going to start off first thing with going through a couple of the more general accessibility features or features that we don't always necessarily think about as accessibility, but can really help us um, work in this application in a more accessible way. So starting off, we're actually going to go to the profile, which is in the top right corner of our Teams application. And we've got our profile icon right there with our image. That's my little face. And then we've also got these three dots next to that. When we select that, the first one that I wanted to highlight here is Zoom. Now, Zoom gives us the ability to zoom in and out for our entire application. Uh, we can also hold the control key on our keyboard and use the uh, mouse on, or the uh, scroll wheel on our mouse to zoom in and out. And that will let us increase the size of everything in our application. We can also zoom back out uh, if we need to do that. Now, this Zoom feature isn't available for Teams VDI or Teams in the virtual desktop instance, but for the desktop application, if you're using Teams on the web, uh, you are able to use the Zoom function, which is something that I like to highlight at the beginning. Another really useful accessibility component in Teams are the keyboard shortcuts, which can be accessed here at the same place that we can access the Zoom menu. You can also press on uh, control period, and that will bring up this keyboard shortcuts menu. Now here we can see all of the keyboard shortcuts for Microsoft Teams. Specifically right now, we're seeing those keyboard shortcuts for Teams on Windows 10 because I'm using a Windows 10 computer. However, if you do use uh, a Mac, you can go to the, um, the same location on your Mac OS Teams application and it will show those, those shortcuts. If you're using a Windows computer, but maybe you're trying to help someone that uses Mac OS, you can always go to see shortcuts for all platforms, and that's going to take you to the uh, keyboard shortcuts on the web, and it will show you shortcuts for Windows as well as Mac OS. If we go down a little bit in these keyboard shortcuts, we can see there are a lot of different keyboard shortcuts for meetings, which will be a, a big focus of what we're looking at today. So if you want to get familiar with those keyboard shortcuts to use during your meetings, then you'll want to come to this part of Teams and check it out. One last kind of major feature that I want to show before we actually start getting into the meetings is going to be in the settings for Teams. So I'm going to click on those three dots again in the top right corner and we'll pop into the settings. The first thing that we're going to see here in our general tab of the settings is our themes. And this is going to change the color theme of Microsoft Teams to suit our particular needs. The default theme is the white theme with purple trim or purple accents. We've also got a dark theme, which will change everything to black with purple accents, which is really great for reducing eye strain. Uh, and then we also have the high contrast theme, and this is going to change everything to a high contrast mode for people with low vision. And that's a very important thing that we have. Uh, enabled here within Microsoft Teams. I'm going to switch back over to default for now. Uh, however, one important note about changing the theme is it does affect all of the areas in Microsoft Teams. So if I do change to high contrast and I am in a meeting, that meeting is also going to be in high contrast. I'll change back to default now and close out of these settings. So as I've said a couple times, the focus really today is going to be on meetings themselves. And so I'm going to hop into a meeting I'm already in my calendar here in Microsoft Teams, and I've got a meeting that's been pre-created. So I'm just going to click on Join here, and it's going to open up our lobby for this meeting. 
Now my camera is not going to be enabled here because of my virtual environment, but the first thing I want to make sure I do is include my audio and I'm going to include the computer audio so it's picking up my built in microphone. As a courtesy to people, I just like to make sure I'm muted before I join a, a training so that I don't have any background noise that's potentially going to be interrupting some conversations. And now we'll click join now and we're going to hop into this team's meeting. Now with Teams meetings. Again, there are several features within this application that may have not originally been designed as an accessibility feature, but they can be used that way. And on the other hand, we do have some features in here that were built specifically for accessibility. And so I'll be going through a variety of those today. The first one that I want to go through is going to be uh, closed captions. And I'll start off by saying that closed captions is one of those features within Teams meetings that may have limitations or caveats within your within your organization. So if you have any questions about what those limitations may be or what features you can, uh, you know, if this is a feature you can really take advantage of, then definitely connect with your CSM. To turn on live captions, we're gonna go to the more actions or those three dots there at the top right of our window. And it's gonna open up our additional option, options, excuse me, for this meeting. Down towards the bottom, we've got the ability to turn on live captions. And when we select that, it's going to take just a minute to get started. It's going to show us our language that the closed captions are being generated in. And if I unmute my microphone uh, in this meeting, then once they do kick up, we'll start to see those closed captions down here at the bottom of my screen, as you can see now. One of the really cool things about these captions is it's going to identify who is speaking. We can see it says Harry J here with my picture. And that's going to let people more easily identify who's speaking in the meeting. These captions are generated automatically using AI. So there may be some instances where technical words aren't going to be picked up, but the ability to have these captions in every single meeting that's hosted within Teams is definitely a, a highlight or a accessibility feature worth highlighting. I'm going to also touch on something that I talked about a second ago. If I hold control on my keyboard and I scroll up on my mouse, I can utilize Zoom right from within this meeting. You can see it's making everything larger from the images, the closed captions at the bottom, all the icons up top. If I were to open my conversation here in the meeting, all of the conversation text is going to be larger as well. So Zooming is, is going to affect this meeting just like it affects the rest of the application. Now I'm going to zoom back out a little bit just to give us some more space. Another accessibility feature that we might not initially think of an accessibility feature is the ability to start a recording for your session. And the reason I highlight this as an accessibility feature is because it may be incredibly useful for some of your team to be able to go back and rewatch particular parts of that meeting if they were um, getting distracted by something happening in the meeting or if they just need to to go in to to catch some additional information having a recording so that people can go back and reference that information is um, an accessibility feature and it's incredibly useful starting a recording is done in the more actions menu just like turning on live captions and it's actually right below turn on live captions and we'll click start recording that's going to take just a minute for it to start recording and when it does start we'll get a little notification at the top of the screen letting us know that the recording has started. There it is, you're recording. We can dismiss this by just clicking the dismiss button. And we also know we're recording because the top left corner has that little red dot right next to the icon that shows we have closed captions in this meeting. Another thing that I'd like to showcase as an accessibility feature is the ability to pin users as well as spotlighting. And those are two fairly similar functions within Microsoft Teams meetings, but there is a really distinct difference. So I don't have anyone in this particular meeting in my demo tenant to demonstrate. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my meeting from this live event over really quickly, and we'll be able to see myself in the bottom corner uh, as well as my colleagues here today. So when you have other users in your meeting, you have the ability to hover over them and click on pin. Now, each individual user within this meeting is going to be able to pin whoever they prefer uh, onto this Microsoft Teams meeting. And what that allows is for people to pin ASL interpreters, presenters as they're speaking, 
and you can pin multiple people at once. So each individual is able to customize who they're focusing on during a training or during a uh, during a meeting. The great thing about pinning as well is if someone is sharing their screen, it's still going to prioritize those pins in the top row where everyone's video is so that you're still able to keep track of an ASL interpreter while a screen is being shared. Now, the difference between pinning that's individual for each user in a meeting and Spotlight is that Spotlight is going to affect everyone. So if I were to Spotlight Glenn here, he is going to be uh, held on video for everyone within this meeting and everyone's going to be able to see him held in place. Now, pinning again is just for the individual user. So if I, in addition, wanted to pin someone and see them side by side with Glenn, I could do that. So that's the real difference between pinning and spotlighting. And again, pinning is a is a great feature for accessibility because users can pin interpreters, pin speakers, and be able to keep track of what's happening in the conversation there. I actually prefer and suggest pinning over spotlighting as much as possible because on the other hand, some users may, uh, neurodivergent users especially, may have, you know, maybe distracted by people that are on video. And so they actually choose not to see people on video or they don't want to highlight someone on video. And so spotlighting can cause some potential issues there. So pinning is something that I really like to highlight as an accessibility feature. Moving on now, I'm gonna go through another really great feature in accessibility. Uh, if we go back into our more actions and we go into device settings, this is gonna be the part of our meeting where we can make sure we have the right microphone selected, the right headphones or speakers selected so that our audio is working properly. But a really important feature that I like to highlight is this noise suppression down here. What this is gonna do is it's going to add a level of noise suppression so that it's trying to filter out some of the background noises that are happening while I'm speaking. Now, you may be able to hear some background noises currently as I'm speaking. I live next to a busy road, unfortunately, but here your users can go in and you can filter how high you want that noise suppression to go. So if you want it to be very high and really try to just focus on your voice and limit some of that background noise, you could set that here. You can also leave it on the default value and it does a pretty good job of filtering out that background noise. Now, this is great because again, those uh, neurodivergent users or uh, users that have um, are hard of hearing or, or, or near deaf may really be able to pick up on those background noises and, and would cause a distraction. So noise suppression is great for you to go in and make sure it's set up properly. There are some other really cool features that I want to highlight next that are going to help with limiting distractions within your meetings. And that's going to be our meeting options. And with these meeting options, what we're able to do is set specific people to be presenters and specific people to be, you know, attendees. And what you're then able to do is limit the attendees ability to do things like come off of mute, um, type in the chat, and that can limit distractions during particular particular meetings if you if you feel that you need to use those. So going to those meeting options again is going to be in those more actions. I always tell people when you're playing with teams, if you want to see what you can really utilize to get more out of this application, anytime you see three dots, go ahead and click on it. So if we're in here and we're going to go to our meeting options. In these meeting options, we'll be able to throughout the training uh, adjust things like who can present, what controls the attendees have in this session, so we can get a better handle on limiting some of those potential distractions during the session. One of the, the features that I actually really enjoy in, in Teams is the ability to use reactions, and that's going to let you, you know, give a thumbs up, a round of applause, a heart, and we'll get to those in, in just a little bit. But you can limit those if you do want to limit distractions on screen. We can do things like disable the chat if we want to disable this chat temporarily. We can disable camera for attendees to limit the number of you know, people that we're seeing on camera to just presenters. We can also disable the microphone for attendees if we don't want to accidentally have people unmuting and speaking during the presentation causing more distractions. You can adjust those here as well as set your presenters here in the meeting options. 
right now and and the default is to set everyone as uh, a presenter if we click this drop down we can choose just people in my organization specific people and then you can identify those people from the attendee list or only me once you select that it's then going to set everyone that doesn't fit that criteria automatically as an attendee the last thing that i like to highlight for limiting distractions with these meeting options is going in and deciding who can bypass the lobby. The lobby is a great tool in Microsoft Teams meetings because it allows us to hold people outside of that meeting while we maybe need to finish getting set up and you know prep for this meeting. You have a lot of different options for how the lobby is managed. By default, we have people in my organization, trusted organization and guests, people in my organization and guests, and these are going to be who are allowed to bypass that lobby right away. Once you're getting kicked off and you're starting that meeting, everything is set up. I always suggest moving it over to everyone and or people I invite, which is also another uh, another option there if you're trying to be a little bit more secure with your organization. But everyone is what I usually select because then people can join the meeting. And we won't get a pop up that comes up on the screen saying that someone's waiting in the lobby. Those pop ups can be a huge distraction during meetings. And so that's why I like to highlight this. Speaking of limiting distractions, we've got another one in more actions. There are really a lot of features here within Microsoft Teams that are going to let us limit those distractions in meetings, uh, which is a huge component of accessibility. In our more actions, the very bottom, we have the ability to turn off incoming video. And so if I have you know 10 people on video during this meeting and it's really distracting me and I can't focus on the on the content that's being delivered. I can turn off incoming video and that will turn off everyone's video specifically for me. So while other people will still be able to see them, I won't be able to. Uh, this is also a really great feature to utilize if your teams is just lagging a lot because there's a lot of people on video. This can really help open up some of that bandwidth. The next feature that I want to show is a feature that allows our meetings to be really inclusive and make sure that everyone's voices are being heard. And that's going to be our uh, raise hand and reactions right here. So when I hover over this menu, we'll have a couple different options. We've got our four reactions here that allow us to react to particular things that have been said during the meeting without needing to come off of mute, without having to type anything in the chat. We can send things like thumbs up, a heart, we can do our round of applause or our laugh. So if it doesn't necessarily warrant a text response, these are great. It's going to pop up on the screen and let people know that you understand what they've said or you're excited about something they've said. On the other hand, if you do need to ask a question or you have a comment about something that's being said, we have the raise hand feature. And what's really great about the raise hand feature is it's going to let other people in this meeting know somebody has a question, somebody has a comment, and it's going to allow the presenter to finish their thought and then circle back to that person that has a question. If we go into our participants menu, we can also see the people in our meeting that do have their hand raised. So we'll be able to call on those users. What else is great about this hand raise feature is it's going to reorganize people based on who raised their hand first. So you could go from the top to the bottom and uh, and call, call on people as they raise their hands. Once they lower their hand by clicking that same uh, button to raise or lower hand, that little yellow hand will disappear and they'll go back into the order that they were originally within the participants menu. So I'll lower my hand here and you can see it was lowered here in the participants menu. So that's a really great feature for us to make sure again that everyone's voice is, is being heard within these meetings. Another way that people can be heard in meetings or communicate in meetings is going to be through the conversation. And I'm going to go ahead and pop into my conversation here and send off a message. Uh, now, by default, our messages are going to be relatively high contrast because we've got this black background. It's a white text on, on a purple message when you are sending a message. Uh, and. But, you know, it may be difficult for some users to to see that message. So we do have the ability to format our messages when we send them in meetings, just like we're able to format them in chats and in channels. Here we can utilize things like bolding text. We can also click on more options. There it is again, those three dots. And we can do things like increase the font size, change the font color for our message. So when we go in and, and select this, 
We'll change our, our font color perhaps to something else like our red here. We send this message off. It's going to stand out a little bit more. The text is larger, it's easier to read. So that's another thing that you can consider when sending messages in a meeting. If in particular, if it's really important information that you want to make sure everyone is able to see. So we've been in this meeting now for a little while and we've gone through some of these really great accessibility features. Just highlighting some of these features again that I, I want you to try and try out next time you're in a, in a Teams meeting. Um, pop in and try pinning and see if you're able to pin some users to the screen, perhaps the people who are speaking or if there's an interpreter. In order to pin users, you can hover over their image just like we did earlier here. You can hover over their name, click on more options and select pin. You can also go into your participants menu and from there, you're able to hover over specific users, click on more options next to their name and there'll be an option to pin um, as well as spotlight. Keep in mind, spotlighting is going to affect everyone in the meeting, so everyone will see that spotlighted user. Uh, I also encourage you to, to start using these reactions and start using raised hands so that everyone's able to ask questions and everyone's able to be heard in your meetings. That's a very important um, piece of inclusivity for me when it comes to meetings. But now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to pop in and I'm going to um, stop this meeting. I'm going to hang up this meeting and what that's going to do is it's automatically going to stop our recording at that point and I'm going to show another place where we can see some really great accessibility features um, related to related to our meeting. So I can click leave and I will leave the meeting myself. Anyone else in this meeting will still be here and in particular if you're recording a meeting one of the issues there is that someone could have stepped away and they will stay in the meeting and that recording will continue until they leave. So if you want to cut off the meeting and say, all right, everyone have a great day. I'm going to end this meeting. The organizer can actually click the arrow right next to leave and decide to end this meeting. That will end the meeting for everyone and, and close it out as well as close out the recording. However, if you want to close the recording or stop the recording, but you do want to continue in this meeting, you do have the ability and more actions to just pop in and stop the recording. Once we click that, it will us, it'll give us a confirmation uh, that we want to stop the recording. We say yes, and now it will tell us that the recording is being saved. So let's find out a little bit about where we can find that recording. I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting, and it will confirm that I want to end this meeting for everyone, which I do. So I'll click end, and this meeting is going to end. Now there's our meeting in the uh, in the calendar. If I double click on this, we'll be able to open up our meeting information and that's the general meeting information that we had from from our session. However, if we want to be able to find our recording, we're going to want to go to chat. And there we are. The most recent uh, chat that we have here is actually the chat from our meeting that we were just in our accessibility in teams. This is gonna allow users to go back and read through the conversation that happened during that meeting, even after it ended, as well as find any files that were attached during this meeting using the files tab up top. And there's our recording right there. So users that were in this meeting from our organization are gonna be able to quickly access this recording. Now, one important note there, uh, for users that you've invited that are external, uh, to a meeting, they won't be able to access the recording from here. So that would be something you'd need to um, provide to them by downloading and, and sending to them if it's something they need. But our users within our organization can click here to play this video and play it right here from within Teams. However, I want to showcase that one area where we can get some more really great accessibility features, and that's going to be Microsoft Stream. So if we click on the three dots here, one of the options for opening this recording is going to be open in Microsoft Stream for us. As long as they have the, uh, your organization has Stream enabled, which is another important thing to note. As we can see here in this uh, demo tenant, we actually don't have Stream enabled. Um, so I am going to pretend that this says open in Stream. I would click on that button and it would take us to our recording within Microsoft Stream, which I've pulled up another recording 
um, in Microsoft Stream ahead of time. So we can take a look at that. Now here we can watch the recording just by clicking play. And what's great about the Microsoft Stream platform is it's going to give us the ability to turn on or off live captions just by selecting here. We can also go into our settings and we can adjust the caption settings by going to caption and subtitle settings. Here we can change the font size of our captions, small, medium, or large. We can also change the background of those, whether it's a dark background or uh, a light background for our closed captions. We can also go in and do things like adjust playback speed. So if I need to uh, watch this session at a slower speed, I can change the playback speed, or I can even speed it up if that's something that I need to do. Over here on the right side, we have the transcript, and the transcript is going to, I mean, it, it shows you exactly what it's going to do. It shows all of the conversation from this meeting as a transcript, and we can see when that particular part of the conversation was happening. So it looks like we start speaking at 117. And here we're able to scroll through the transcript to just read what's going on as the as the session is happening live. This transcript should also scroll through as as we are continuing in this meeting. All right, continuing watching this recording, but here in the transcript we're able to read along with what's happening, find particular points in that meeting and and see what happened in those particular points. Another really great tool there is being able to search the transcript. So if I'm searching the transcript for the word meeting and I hit enter, it's going to show all the timestamps where meetings were mentioned and we're able to uh, jump ahead to particular parts of this meeting once we find what we're looking for. Now, as the owner of this uh, recording within stream, I can also go in and edit this transcript. So if I notice there's something about a transcript that is incorrect. Uh, so if. Once it loads for us there, uh, if perhaps I didn't want to say um, Portland here. Then I could go in and oh, it's because I have a meeting there. If I didn't want to have it say Portland here and maybe uh, instead I actually said uh, Portlandia like the TV show, then I could correct that word click save and we're able to correct our transcript for incorrect words. This is really great if you guys have a lot of technical terms or terms you want to make sure come across in this transcript. Uh, you can pop in there and edit those terms. I'm going to discard this though because I do in fact live in Portland and I, I want it to reflect that here in the transcript. So I'm going to click that check mark to save that. And that is how we can really utilize the accessibility features within stream. So users are able to go in and customize how their closed captions look. Watch that recording to review previous information and you have that searchable transcript over on the right side as well, just to make it um, easier to find particular parts of that meeting. Now I would like to jump over to another application within the Microsoft 365 environment and talk about a really cool accessibility feature um, that I, I like to show off. So we're actually going to be hopping into OneDrive and or excuse me, OneNote, and this is OneNote for Windows 10. So this is our, our OneDrive application that comes with Microsoft 365. And here we have probably one of my favorite little features to showcase, and that's going to be Dictate. Now, when we think about accessibility, um, we're thinking we usually think about the kind of major major groups we've got. Um, hearing, vision, neuro, neurodiversity. Uh, disabilities can also be temporary though. Dictate is great for, for users that aren't able to type, whether they have a permanent disability or a temporary disability, like perhaps they've broken their hand or they've broken their arm. They can still continue to take notes and work by using the Dictate function. Dictate exists in other applications within Microsoft 365 as well. It's not specific to OneNote. However, I, I like the interaction here in OneNote a lot and it's really easy to showcase. So here I'm going to start dictating. And I'm just going to say really whatever comes to mind because uh, we are going to start. We're just going to start dictating. So as I speak, we can see it is picking up what I'm saying pretty easily and this will be a feature that's useful for taking notes, period. 
you can always come back and review your notes after and make any edits. Looks like I had a little problem streaming audio. That's OK. One of the really cool things about Dictate I like to show off as well is it's not just limited to English. If English isn't your first language and you prefer to dictate in another language, you can select that language as well. Uh, I could select German, for example, go into Dictate. Vielen Dank an alle, die zum Seminar gekommen sind. And we were able to, to uh, dictate in another language. You can also uh, right click on that message and go to translate and it will let you translate the message. I feel like we had a little bit of a grammatical error there, but we can see the translation to English says thanks to everyone who came to our seminar today. So we have other applications within Microsoft 365. If we go back to our Office 365 portal, all of these applications are going to have some sort of accessibility features built in. One of the ones that um, is, is really great to highlight is going to be the uh, check accessibility feature. So if I were to pop into a, um, a document, any of these documents, but I want to make sure that I pop into the right one. Let's just pop in some notes. If we pop into a document, we have the ability in the review tab to check accessibility. Check accessibility is going to give you a list of parts of that document that need to be reviewed to make sure this document is accessible for everyone in your organization. So while you not, might not be aware of some of those accessibility concerns for your staff or users in your organization, you can be comfortable that the, access, the document you're sending out is accessible for users. Now, this is a, a template document, and so it doesn't have any accessibility uh, points to highlight for us, but open up one of your Word documents next time you are, you're at your computer and you have a few minutes, go into the review tab and open check accessibility and see if there are any parts of that document that aren't quite accessible and that you can change to be more accessible for your organization. I have some additional time here left over. It looks like I got through some of that information quicker than I was expecting, but are there any questions that I can potentially answer, things that I can demonstrate again, or other things you'd like me to demonstrate? I don't see any other questions that potentially need to be answered. Uh, does the transcript show when changes have been made? That's a great question. So uh, it won't have any sort of notification here that lets people know the transcript has been changed. Um, so that, that is an important, a great question. Any other questions uh, that we can, we can help answer around accessibility features? OK, I'll pop over into Teams because we've got a little bit time left, a little bit of time left over before we move into our next segment. And I want to just uh, explore some of the other accessibility features that we can we can highlight there. So back in our Microsoft Teams here, if we go back to our settings. Captions and transcripts is going to be a section of the settings within Microsoft Teams. And this just gives each individual user the ability to say if they are OK being identified whenever captions are being automatically um, created for meetings. So as I showed earlier in that meeting, it identified me as I was speaking. If I don't want that to automatically identify me, I could turn this off. However, identifying is super useful for the other users, so I would encourage keeping that on. Another thing that we can consider for accessibility uh, for the individual user are actually going to be notification settings. So sometimes too many notifications can be overstimulating and it can it can cause a lot of distractions. So 
if that's something that you're concerned with when using Microsoft Teams, come into the notifications and really start to customize exactly how you're getting notified. Each of these different areas of Teams, like chat, meetings, people, other, have the ability to go in and customize how you're going to get notified for specific things. For example, if I click on edit next to chat, we'll be able to see that I can choose how I'm getting notified when people directly mention me or mention a, a channel that I belong to, for example, when people reply to me or when people react to something that I posted. We've got a couple of major types of notifications, banner notifications and then the feed notification. A banner notification is a purple box that pops up down in the bottom right corner whenever you receive whatever particular notification it is. Feed notification is going to refer to over in the activity uh, or just your feed kind of in general. Um, and you know, if it's a chat message, it could show up in chats. If it's a reaction, it'll show up in activity. So you could choose to limit the number of banners that are showing. And that will reduce the number of times things are popping up on your screen and you know reduce the chance of getting overstimulated by all of those um, all of those notifications. A really cool tool within Microsoft Teams that can help with usability in general is going to be this search bar up top. You can use the search bar to search for general terms like let's say accessibility. We could see there's a couple of group chats with that name here that pop up right away. However, if I, if I click enter, we'll get a search result section that will show things like messages with that word. We can filter those to see if they're from a particular person, if they're in a chat or a channel, as well as additional filters like date range uh, and location. We can look for people if we're searching a person's name, or we can also search for file names. Now, a really cool thing about this search bar is if you were to type uh, backslash on your keyboard, you're able to see all the commands that you have. These commands kind of add on to what you're able to do with keyboard shortcuts, and they really just give you uh, quick ways to be able to do various functions within Teams. So for example, if I want to send a message to one of my colleagues, but I'm in a meeting or I'm perhaps doing something else in Teams, I could type slash chat, hit space, find that user or type that user's name, hit enter, and I could type that message. I could say thanks for your help today and hit enter to send that message off. It sent a message to that user without breaking my focus wherever I am in the application, and I know that it sent that quick, that quick direct message to her. Another thing that I like to highlight for an accessibility component that may not really be thought about as, as an accessibility component is going to be back here in the profile. And what I want to highlight here is actually a presence or a status icon. If we click here, we're actually able to set our status icons manually. Um, in addition to, you know, by default, if you have Exchange Online set up, these will change according to your calendar. But the one that I particularly want to highlight here is Do Not Disturb. Now, if there's a, a project that you really need to focus on, um, you want to give yourself 30 minutes perhaps to, to, uh, to really focus on a particular project every day or 30 minutes of focus time every day, you can go in and enable Do Not Disturb. And what this will do is it will, um, it won't allow people to call you in that time and any kind of notifications that you would get for reactions, messages will not show up as banners. They'll automatically just go over to your feed and you can deal with them when you're ready. Now, if you do change your presence manually, it'll remain on that presence until you go in and set it to something else or you go in and click reset status. So that's really important to note as well. So once I click reset status, it's going to change it back to my status that's reflected on my calendar. With Do Not Disturb, there is a cool little tool that allows you to add specific people as exceptions to the Do Not Disturb rule. So if I go into my settings and I go to privacy, then at the top of the privacy section, we have Do Not Disturb. And we have the ability to manage a priority access list Effectively, what this will do is users on this priority access list will still be able to call me. I'll still get notifications for their chat messages. 
even if I'm in do not disturb. So let's say that I have my manager um, and I, I really want to add my manager to this list. And I'll just say Christian is, is my manager for now. Then I can add Christian to this list. He'll always be able to call me no matter what. If I want to remove someone from this list, all you have to do is click the X so it can be changed um, according to your particular needs. So that's all of the features that I would highlight. I do want to wrap up and say that a lot of accessibility features that we have here in the desktop application teams are going to be available elsewhere um, as you know, like the mobile application, uh, but not all of them. So if you are curious whether or not some of these accessibility features are going to be available on the web, on the mobile application, I always encourage people to go in and try it out. You know, you're never you're never really going to be able to, to find the answer that you want without going in and doing it yourself. However, you do have a really great team of CSMs, uh, a lot of them in this call today, that would be able to help get answers for those questions if you do have questions about features. Uh, one of the ones I love to highlight is uh, closed captions being available on mobile, uh, which not a lot of people think about, but you can actually use closed captions on mobile as long as your organization has that enabled. Um, so that's everything that, that I have today. I know I'm ending a little bit early, uh, so I want to check and see if there are any questions um, in the Q&A that, that my team have seen that I can help answer before we move on. Yeah, Harry, can you talk about um, what other attendees see as you're using the live captions feature uh, and then contrast that with transcripts, um, how one is private and the other isn't? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great question, sir, or great comment there, Nash. So uh, whenever you are in a Teams meeting and you enable live captions, live captions are going to be for you specifically. So if I was in my meeting and I decided to turn on those live captions, those live captions will be just enabled for me so that I'll be able to see the live captions that are, you know, are, are scrolling through in that meeting. So let me pop in and turn those back on again. Turn on live captions. These live captions are going to be something that I can see throughout the training, but or throughout the call, but other users, if they don't have live captions turned on, they won't be able to see those live captions. So it's not something that's gonna pop up automatically for everyone in the call. Uh, that's another reason why you wanna make sure that you remind your team that they are available if they do wanna turn those on. Now, Nash brought up a great point about transcripts uh, and transcripts as opposed to live captions are something that is um, public. So that's available to all of the users that are have access to this meeting. So that transcript that we saw in stream, for example, everyone is able to see that transcript. Now, I'm not going to touch on there's there's plenty of, of really great features that are going to be coming to the GCC tenant. Um, in the future, and we have someone that's going to talk about that later. Uh, but um, transcripts is something that that is available to everyone. So if you do have a transcript for a meeting, that's going to show for everyone. Uh, while while live captions are going to be for each individual. Thanks for bringing that up, Nash. Any other points that we can highlight before we hand off to our next presenter? Harry, there was one question about uh, dictation. There was someone wanted to see the demo again. How to turn on dict dictation in OneNote? Dicta dictation, yeah, I can definitely show dictation again. I'll go in and Thank I'm going to out of this meeting. And I'll open up OneNote again. So dictation is going to be on the home tab of OneNote. And if you're ever in one of the other uh, Office 365, Microsoft 365 applications, and you want to try and find dictation, you can search for it in the, the search bar or the tell me bar at the top of that application. But here it's in our home bar all the way at the right, and we can just click to dictate here, and that will let us start dictating as we speak. So if I click dictate, we can start taking notes by speaking to OneNote as opposed to having to type them, which is great for users that may not be able to type from a temporary or a permanent disability, period. And it's important to 
make sure to say your uh, your periods or your exclamation marks, any of that sort of stuff in your typing, if that's something you want to make sure that is showing up in your dictation. I click up here at the top to stop dictation, and we can move to a different part of OneNote and continue taking notes verbally as we please. As I showed earlier, we do have the ability to uh, change to a different dictation language. So if you prefer to speak in another language to take your notes, if English is not your first language, then these languages are available. These first 10 or so are uh, languages that are all set up and good to go. We do have other languages that are still in preview, so they are still being worked on. Uh, however, there are several other different languages that you could try out for dictation. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Rajiv. Anything else that I can highlight? Hi, Harry. I don't see a lot of other questions that you haven't already answered. Um, if anyone would like to put more information in the Q&A, we're happy to elevate it to, to Harry, um, but I think we've got everything pretty well covered so far. Awesome, thanks. I did see something pop up about transcripts being created, um, and I, I do just want to uh, highlight transcripts right now. So with, with um, Okay. When a, a meeting has been recorded and it's available in Microsoft Stream, it's going to have a transcript there by default. So that's something that's that's going to be there unless you've um, you've gone in and decided to hide the transcript as the owner of that meeting of of that recording. So in Stream, which I believe I still have open, I can go into my settings and I can hide the transcript. And so it's going to hide the transcript for this meeting if it's something that I don't want to show for any particular reason. Um, and we have we have someone who's going to be talking later about uh, features to come, and and they'll be able to highlight some more information around that if those questions come up there. 